you know, and they're not, and they're doing well, and they're talking to me. <laughs> Great. And, um, you know, I'm sure some of those things could have happened anyway, but um, <laughs> I feel lucky that they're doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not all what the parent does. It's, you know, how, what a sticky wicket it is to get through adolescence without kind of falling in a, in a big hole. For a yeah, while. and there are a lot of holes. It's like kind of jumping over all of them all the time. And it, it, it's really hard. It's definitely not just all we do. I'm always trying to tell parents that, you know. No, we, we have a very predatory society, um, yeah. in particular on adolescence. It's, um, yeah, that's been coming up a lot recently with a lot of my clients. been talking a lot about that. So much just self-blame. It's my fault. And that's one of the most beautiful things about bringing everybody together is that they realize, oh, well, if this person and that person and the other person are experiencing this, then maybe it's not me. <laughs> yeah, very hard things happen to very good people. Yeah. Anyway, it looks like we're, we're technically live again, which okay. would be awesome. So okay. should we take two? <laughs> All right, let's do take two. So welcome, you know, hand in hand Facebook folks. I'm Patty Whitfler. I'm the founder and the program director at Hand in Hand. And I'm so glad you're here because I really want you to hear from Tasha Shore. She's my co-author in the book, Listen, um, Five Simple Tools for Meeting Your Everyday Parenting Challenges. We um, had a long and just very interesting, not all easy project writing that book. And, um, and we're, I don't know, Tasha's just wonderful. She thinks really, really well about parenting and in particular about parenting boys. And she sprouted her own business called Your Partner in Parenting. And we want you to stick with us through this half hour. Let's see, I'm just trying to make sure we keep track of time here. Um, so, so that you can have the advantage of hearing about her um, Out With Aggression program that she's offering and that Hand in Hand is offering on our Facebook page and hear some of the really cool bonuses that you'll get from Hand in Hand. It's actually a, a big wheelbarrow full of good stuff from Hand in Hand if you sign up for Tasha's Out With Aggression program um, today, you know, before midnight tonight. So uh, we want you to know about that. So hang in here. All right. So I just want to say Tasha is um, just her verve is all throughout the listen book. And you'll see a lot of her verve and her um, zest and her enjoyment of thinking about and helping parents. Um, so Tasha, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patty, for yeah. hosting me and for letting me share my thinking. <laughs> Really glad you're here. I really um, have learned a lot from you over the years. Um, so what I wanted to do is just to ask you to talk a little bit about, just let people know how did you come by the knowledge and the perspective that you share with parents who are trying to you know, deal with aggressive behavior or share with parents in general? It's like, how, how did you come to where you are? Um, basically by bottoming out <laughs> and trying a bunch of stuff that didn't work, <laughs> kind of like the rest of everybody. <laughs> yeah, I was, um, you know, I think we write about in the, in the, in the forward to the book, but essentially, um, I got to a really hard place where I found myself parenting in ways that I did not feel good about, um, felt spending a lot of my time feeling exhausted and angry and scared. And like, I didn't have what it took to raise these kids. And I looked for help. I was smart enough to look for help. I'll give myself that. <laughs> and well, for parents, yeah. Yeah, and we were actually, you and I were just talking about this the other day because I was having a hard time because hard times come and go. And I called you and I said, can you help? <laughs> and at the end, I said to you, you know, I owe you um, a lot because there was a time when asking for help was something that I could not do. I felt like it was a sign of weakness. Um, I felt like it meant that there was something wrong with me, that I wasn't thinking well enough. I wasn't smart enough. Um, something, yeah, it, it just was, it was horrible. And it was a lonely place to be. And it was a hard place to be. And it was keeping me stuck. 
And with regard to my parenting was keeping me stuck in a place of all those feelings that I mentioned earlier of fear and not knowing what to do and be feeling hopeless and all those things. And so um, when I reached out for support way back when I found you, I don't know how I just hit the jackpot, but I did and started getting the support that I needed for myself to be able to work through all those feelings and then learn the amazing tools that you taught me so that I could react or not react, but respond to my boys in a very different way. And then, I, you know, what felt like magic started happening. And I was like, Ooh, <laughs> maybe I can do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> and like, I think just like anything is like when you learn something new that gets you such great results, you get super excited and you want to share with somebody else. And that's what inspired me to become a trainer of hand in hand and to write the book with you and to spread the word about these tools and these practices as far and wide as, um, as far, as far and wide as I possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say also just like with aggression, you know, when my boys, uh, I think I mentioned they were close to 13, 15, 17 at this point, but gosh, when they were little, aggression was a big thing between siblings. Yeah. Also physical aggression, but also verbal stuff. Um, and, and I think there's not a lot that breaks a parent's heart in the way that seeing one child act harshly towards another breaks that parent's heart, right? Mm -hmm. And I know my heart was broken and I was having all sorts of horrible thoughts about what their relationship was going to look like. Mm -hmm. And not only was I having horrible thoughts, but I was having like family members go like, you know, you better watch out, like, God, those two, like, they really don't get along and stuff like that, which would just feed my worry. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, how to, how to move through the aggression. But what I will say now is that they're very close. So wow. it worked. Wow. They go to the gym together and they talk about music and they go out for ice cream and they, yeah, they do all kinds of stuff together and they are really big supports for one another. And these are two who, when they were little, were at each other and not just me, but everybody was a little bit worried about what lied ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's quite an accomplishment, Tasha. Uh, yeah, it's yeah good. It, it, it is, good. I mean, I feel proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's really important for other parents to hear. It's like, yeah, although things are, really difficult right now it can change and it can change radically in the in the good direction yeah absolutely as and if that's all you guys take from this call or listening in on this live is great yeah. that's great like things can change as hopeless as you feel right now things can change yeah. and so what do you love about working with parents it's like clearly you've decided to make this your your passion and your endeavor in life um what what keeps you going what keeps me going is my larger mission. So in my business, my larger mission is to create a more peaceful world one sweet boy at a time. And I talk about that all the time. And I feel like as parents of young boys and people are always asking me, well, why, why is this boys and why not girls? You know, girls have aggression too and girls do this too. And totally, I'm with you, all that's true. Um, the reason that I have this mission is because it's what drives me. And I felt like a lot of times, especially when my boys were young and I was very busy parenting them, like high, high time demand parenting them all the time, I was feeling like I wasn't able to have the effect on the world that I wanted to be having. You know, we, we, the work of parenting isn't valued. So I couldn't see that what I was doing was worthwhile. I felt like I was missing out. And what I, I, I found myself feeling really bad. I remember one morning, like um, reading the newspaper and just seeing all sorts of negativity, right? I mean, horrible things, murders and rapes and terrorist attacks and, and all at the hands of men that I was reading. And I thought, geez, you know, what is going on here? Like, what is going on? Every one of these men was a sweet boy at one point. What happened? And I'm not naive. We talked about this a little bit, you know, before maybe, you know, about it's not just us, like the environment has a big impact. But we do have an amazing opportunity as parents of young boys to, for example, address their aggression when they're young and help them through that. So they're not growing up trying to hold all the feelings inside and have it be spewing out in all of these really horrible ways all the time. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, what drives me is that what we do behind closed doors with our boys actually has a gigantic effect, not just on the peacefulness of our homes and the relationships between our siblings, but also on our schools, on our, you know, all sorts of communities that we have and on, 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 you know, on the world as a whole. I think we, you know, it's important. It's important work. And I want parents to know that, you know, what you do matters in a big way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. So, so this is really how play relieves the fears that underlie aggression. This is what we're talking about today. And I want to know what's the main message you want to get across today to moms and dads? Um, specifically with regard to play? Um, or yeah, but just whatever main message you, you want. Yeah. I guess the main message and play is one conduit for that. The main message that I want to get across is that if your boy is acting aggressively, if he's hitting or spitting or cussing or pinching or biting or whatever, you know, whatever it is, um, I want you to know one, that he's asking for help and two, that you are the perfect person to help him. Great. That would be the main message. Okay, okay. <laughs> How is that for short and concise? Not usually my MO, but that was pretty good. Beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. So I hope we have a lot of perfect persons to help out there. <laughs> That's great. So um, you say that play can help a child who tends to be aggressive. Um, but if it was my mom and dad listening to that, or lots of parents out there listening to that, they would go, no, that boy needs a good scolding and needs a lot of strict, you know, strict treatment. And you got to take stuff away from him. You got to make it worth it to him to not be aggressive. So why play and why not all that other stuff? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, what I hear all the time is that, well, if I play with him when he's acting this way, if I move in playfully, then I'm rewarding the bad behavior. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, I hear this over and over again, but the reality is, is that if aggression is a call for help, which I'm convinced that it is, mm -hmm. and we parents obviously love our children, and if you work with me or you're familiar with the principles of hand-in-hand -hand parenting, we work with this principle that children are doing the best they can in every moment. And so if we take that, okay, he's doing the best he can, and he's you know, spitting in my face, <laughs> then we go, well, that's not good enough. I've got to do something about it, mm -hmm. right? Um, if, we, if, we, if we take all those pieces and we see that, it, if, we take, if we take all those pieces, then what we want to do in order to actually stop the behavior is help him feel felt, help him feel seen, help him notice that we're there, that he's not alone because when, when a child is acting aggressively, they are very likely terrified. And with fear is almost always this feeling of feeling alone. I mean, if you just think about yourself, right? Anybody who's listening out there, when you feel scared, you generally feel pretty isolated. And it all is just like, it feeds, it feeds itself. So we get to interrupt that play, why play? Because play interrupts that in a beautiful way. Sometimes when it works, it doesn't always work, but, but, but it's certainly a great thing to try. And play um, brings laughter, and laughter builds connection, right? We were we were laughing. We had a big, you know, bloop at the beginning of the, of the technical blip, and it was just like, oh God, you know, just when you're about to go talk to all these people, and we think we're on our way, and then everything blows up in our face, and we're like, I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know how to deal with this, right? But we could laugh about it as we were figuring it out and, and laughing allowed us to regain our ability to think about, okay, how can we get back on here and like serve these people and tell them what we wanted to tell them? How can we move through the overwhelm of, I don't know how to deal with this technology. And it's the same thing in our parenting. It's like, if we can get to that place where we can be playful, then we can help the boys, um, you know, our, our boys get, or, you know, and girls too, obviously, but you know, we help our kids, um, feel connected and less alone such that they can actually start thinking again. I'm like pointing at my prefrontal cortex, right? Like, you know, <laughs> they, you're thinking up here. 
<laughs> so yeah, play is just amazing. So I know there's, there's a fear that we're doing the wrong thing, but what I always say is I'm super results oriented. Mm -hmm. I want life to go better for you. Yeah. So, and, and, and the, the funny thing about parenting and I'm Patty, I say this to people all the time, like you'd be hard pressed to think about any other realm of your life where you do something and it doesn't work. And so you keep doing it over and over again, like thousands and thousands and thousands of times. I mean, if you did that at work, you would be fired, right? That would be the end of your job. But we do it all the time in our parenting. So we see some, a child who's aggressive and because we don't know what to do and we're scared and we think we're supposed to, we punish. We put him, we, we, you know, we send him to his room or we take away electronics you know, for two weeks because he broke the TV or whatever it is. But the reality is the behavior doesn't change. So why do we keep doing the same thing over and over again? <laughs> Let's try something else. And as crazy as play sounds, it will get you results. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, in a way, play is good because it requires us to look at least somewhat delighted. In a way, play is a little bit like flirting with someone and saying, I have some love for you. Here it comes, you know. And when when we're offering a little love, a little tease, a little, you know, a little challenge, um, boys can, they, you know, if it's really heavy feelings, they can't respond well, but um, they can respond with delight back. And once you've got, you know, two people delighted with one another, then it can continue and the delight builds and that works to melt the, the fear underneath aggression. Yeah. Right, exactly. The laughter, the laughter is just such a huge relief. Yeah, it is. It is. So, so I, I've known children, though, many children, maybe even most children who have a big fear underneath that's rankling them and therefore they're impulsive and aggressive, who when you play with them, um, they get more and more wound up and they, they become a girl. A, a, you know, impulsive and, you know, start pinching or start slapping or start, you know, they, they want to, <laughs> they reach for the baseball bat and kind of pick it up like they're going to wacky with it. And um, that can, that can scare a parent if they are not ready for it. So can you talk about why that happens and what parents can do to handle the, the way that, you know, the, the excitement, but also the impulse, impulsiv impulsivity and the aggression kind of mounts in the middle of some of play. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm not as interested in why it happens because I feel like parents spend way too much time trying to figure out why everything happens. And I'm like, let's just deal with it. Like, okay, fine, it's, it's happening regardless of whether or not it's why, regardless of what the why is, right? But, but, but really, um, I, I, in, in terms of the why, if, if when, we, when we show our boy that we're there for him, even when he's acting all crazy, mm -hmm. then he starts to get a sense that we can maybe handle all of what's going on inside him. So what's happening is he's trying to hold things in. But when we start to be playful and not reactive to him, for example, when he shows the aggression, then he starts to think and realize that maybe we have actually the brain space to listen to a little bit more about how hard things are for him right now. So, you know, that's a little bit about the why, but then I, the reality is, is we don't want our kid coming at us with a baseball bat, right? <laughs> that is dangerous. <laughs> so um, setting limits is a huge piece of how we address aggressive behaviors. And, you know, in my course out with aggression, we go very deeply into this. And the, and the thing is, it's like people will go astray a lot of times with setting limits, mostly because we don't know how to do it in a way that's not harsh, because that's all we've ever seen or known. So we learn how to set them in a loving kind of a way. And if your child is coming at, you know, getting more and more aggressive as you're playing, there may be a time when you actually need to bring a limit and with your body, not like, Sweetie, I would really love for you to not come at me with a baseball bat. <laughs> or, or even, don't you dare come at me with that baseball bat, right? Neither of which will probably work. Again, back to what works. Mm -hmm. So we talk a lot about physically stopping it. Like I, talk, I like to talk about making stop happen. 
you cannot let your child hit you or anybody else with a baseball bat. You have to come in and actually hold the baseball bat, right? Or stop it. But we get to learn how to do that in a loving way so that the child's not feeling shamed by it, but actually can regain a feeling of safety because we're doing our job as parents of making sure everyone stays safe. Right, right. Okay, okay, great. Well, what, what about when parents don't feel like playing, like they see behavior and they just go, I mean, in a way it's easy to be sort of, um, it's easy to be paralyzed by aggressive behavior, especially if you have not yourself um, grown up wrestling and, you know, just having a, a, a big old roughhousing time as a child and, and many of us moms anyway have grown up you know doing little barbie things um and have not really had a chance to romp and play hard and tussle with boys and so when we see aggression it, it we you know we it's not in our experience to know what to do so what do you do as a parent when you don't have any idea how you would play with you know the the pinching or the slapping or the grabbing stuff that's going on Right. Um, well, a couple of things. My, my first thought was that, is there anybody in your boy's life who can play well, who does feel comfortable playing? Because it doesn't always have to be you. Oh, wow. Yeah. What a concept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, I see this oftentimes in couples, and I know not everybody has a, has a co-parent, but when, when there's another parent, and it doesn't have to be a parent, something it can be a grandparent or a neighbor or a mentor or whatever, but, you know, most of us have somebody in our lives who we, we know is good at being playful. Mm -hmm. Hire them, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I don't necessarily mean for money, but like have them come play, have them do what they do well. Or if you're in a, if you're in a partnership, oftentimes there's you know, a lot of uh, harshness or being critical of one another. Like, you know, well, he's not very good at doing, you know, being gentle with him, with, with our boy when he's aggressive or something like that, or she's not very good at this. But the reality is, is often in a couple, there's one who can be more playful. And I always say like, work to your strengths, like play to your strengths. So if there is somebody in the family, in the household that can be playful, use them. So use them for pillow fights or for, you know, I love that. Um, you know, when you, when you put the child on the, on a sheet and like drag them around the house, right. They love that. Yeah, they or love horse that. rides or, you know, sliding down the stairs on a camping mattress or, or whatever, but like physical stuff, whoever's good at it, do it. Sometimes we just do feel like, like, I can't play right now. And what do you do in those moments? I mean, it depends on the situation. I think sometimes you know, we write about that one, one thing in the book about just like laying down on the ground. <laughs> and that is something that you can try. And I, I have people who have success with this all the time. And you actually just lay down on the ground. Right, and where, you are. Yeah. right where you are. Yeah, right where you are. And often what happens is that it's such like a shock to the system of your little one. It's like, you, you know, this, this adult who's usually in control and towering over him and whatnot is, is uh, you know uh, is suddenly this sort of flat thing on the ground <laughs> and it's it 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 kind of can um move them into a place oftentimes where they will come crawling towards you or come climb on you and again we're going for connection so it's just another way to make you feel less of a threat to them and allow them to come close to you um, and then there's sometimes where you just you know you have to excuse yourself mm -hmm. If, if nobody is getting hurt or if they're trying to hurt you and you feel like you're going to lose it and you can't be playful, then you, you have to excuse yourself because better the lamp get broken even than that you hurt your child because you're so triggered by what's going on in the moment. So sometimes we do have to make hard choices. But one of the things that we work on and out with aggression and that in general with a hand-in-hand -hand parenting philosophy is getting the support that you need as a parent and so, so that you can access your playfulness because everybody can play, yeah. right? You were born playful. 
And the only reason that you don't have access to that now is because something happened along the way to shut that down. But, but, but we can totally open that up again. So, so those are the things that I would say. Um, give me one second, because I see that there's some questions. We're, we're actually on a different platform, so we're getting some questions typed over from, uh, from uh, the Facebook page. Um, can I go ahead and read it, Patty? I'll read it to you. Okay. So how do we respond after the aggression has already occurred? Toddler one bites toddler two hard on the arm. You're in the other room, and that's and now there's this deep purple teeth marks and lots of tears. Like what? Yeah. Can you briefly go into that? Because I want to save time for talking about your program. So. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll answer it quickly. Um, first, I'll just say that this is this is very common, and in out with aggression, we definitely talk about um, how to anticipate the aggression, right? And how to anticipate those incidents. So we're not taken by surprise so much. That's a big piece and including to the, including the piece about working on ourselves. Um, but if this happens, I love, and I learned this from you, Patty, is that we get to burst in there and we get to say, I'm sorry, I didn't get here in time to keep you both safe. And I get questions. I mean, today I probably got 10 questions about sibling rivalry, huge sibling issues. And this is an amazing strategy that helps build love and appreciation between siblings because instead of spending all this time that we spend trying to figure out who done it, or in this case, you know who did it, but like, you know, what happened and why did that happen? Or, you know, we spend all this time lecturing when it doesn't help anyway, and back to that doing the same thing over and over again that isn't working thing, right? Um, so if we can come in and say, you know, Oh, I'm sorry I didn't get here in time to keep you both safe. And then you obviously like, you know, you, you tend to whatever wound needs tending to if in fact, you know, the skin is broken or there's some problem that needs to be dealt with um, physically. But also mostly I think that the wounds are emotional. And the important thing I wanna say here is that both children are hurting, not just the one with the bite marks, <clears throat> okay? so. The tears are a good thing. And if you can remain calm and listen to both of them have their feelings, you'll be able to help them move on and they will actually heal and be able to be close to one another again. So that's really like really short version. Great, great. Those, those are very important points. I, I, I'll add one more that I love. I, I, I think it's really helpful when you have a hurt child, no matter how they got hurt, it's really helpful to tell them your body knows how to heal. You know, your body knows how to heal because they're feeling mortally wounded. It's like any wound is a mortal wound, especially when you're two years old. It's all deeply important and who knows if I'll ever survive. And I think we need to reassure our children. And I think in saying that ourselves, we calm ourselves down too. It's like your body knows how to heal, you know? And I often say, you know, he, he didn't, I'm sorry I didn't get here before you got hurt. Your brother loves you or your sister loves you. And yep. you know, he just got a little lost there. So, so there's no blame. You know, yep. Just you know, bringing, I don't know, bringing confidence that in spite of this, our lives are good and, and we'll, we'll make it through. Yeah, and that's what children need. It's like if we get all excited, then it does feel like a, a you know a, a mortal a crime, a crime has occurred, and um, and that that makes everything harder. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Thanks for adding that for sure. Yeah, yeah. So there's one more thing I want to read you. It says appreciation from a listener. It's so strange and wonderful to see Patty being the interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> I like it too. <laughs> Especially when we get to listen to you, Tasha. So oh. it's so good to see you both, Patty and Tasha. So thank you. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to switch up the roles sometimes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. With our kids too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a great way to be playful, by the way. <laughs> yep, yep. So Tasha, what's your final message to moms and dads that you want? What What would you like them to remember? I mean, you um, said a lot of important things here, but. Yeah, I mean, there, there's so much more to say. And um, what do I want you to remember? I want you to remember that your sweet boy is doing the best that he can. If he's showing aggression, it's a call for help. 
and that, like I said, you are absolutely the one who can help him. It's oftentimes a job that we would love to pass on to somebody else. I know when my boys were little, I'm just like, Patty, can you just deal with this? <laughs> and I sometimes feel that from people. It's like, I just want to channel you. You can channel me, but you got to do the work, right? <laughs> so um, I just want you to know that you are the one who can do it and you have everything that you need to do it. And my job is to just be able to help you access that and give you the tools that you need so your toolbox is full. And um, you know that, that's what I do in Out With Aggression. So don't give up, the situation's very hopeful. And if you're struggling with aggression, I would love for you to join me for my live run of this course in January, it's gonna be pretty cool. Great. So Hand in Hand is um, a, a partner with Tasha in presenting her course. She does all the work, but we're introducing you to her and hoping that you'll fall in love with her the way we have. And um, it's called Out With Aggression, and you can sign up for it on our Facebook page. If you do that, it, you know, it helps, it supports our work at Hand in Hand, as well as getting you into um, a course that will give you lots of tools and perspective and support so that you can really learn with Tasha's help. And it's always a good idea to reach out for help when things are hard. It's really one of the best moves you can make as a parent and, and you need to keep making it until you get what you need. And I think it's a one-stop one -stop fulfillment thing if you go to Tasha on aggression. Um, you won't have to you won't have to wander around um, anymore. She's really, really good at this. Mm -hmm. And um, if you register by midnight tonight for Tasha's course, and there'll be a link on our Facebook page, um, here's what Hand in Hand has for you to support you um, as well. So what you do is you get a free year in the parent club, everybody who registers for Tasha's course, which is in and of itself, I don't know, it's, it's quite a substantial gift and another source of support for you. Um, you get a free, free access to our mm, self-guided video on setting limits, which will also be of support and of help. I'll see you on that, it's mostly me. And um, there will be three people who get um, a free consultation with me. So we're going to do a little drawing amongst the people who register for Tasha's course. And I'll be talking to those of you whose names get drawn um, after midnight tonight. So I'll, I'll be very glad to help you. And we, we really wanted to support our, our, our followers at Hand in Hand to access Tasha's wisdom and her support and her energy um, so that your lives go better. So we're we're really interested in the same thing, that parents get the help they need, that you get the help and the support that makes life better. And um, taking Tasha's course is one way you can do that. It's a, it's a big way you can do that. So anything else you want to say, Tasha? Yeah, well, if I can just talk a little bit about what the course is so people know and, you know, just say that I... I generally do a live run of this course once a year and it, it's the biggest way that I get to support hand in hand. Um, because a portion of, of the tuition for the course goes to hand-in-hand -hand parenting. So it's a way that I feel like I get to give back to hand-in-hand -hand for all that hand-in-hand -hand has done for me and my family and guiding me. And the course itself is a five module course. It's a virtual course, um, but it has live components to it. So you have five modules, I call it um, a step-by-step -step practice because it's not a one and done. It's a step-by-step -step practice to stop your boy's aggressive behaviors and lift your parenting confidence. And that is my goal for you within the course. And so there, we, I also have bonus modules where I've interviewed experts in various fields, education, brain science, um, play, and you have access to that. I have some audio interviews that are case studies of parents who have figured out how to get their partners on the same page with them or have figured out how to parent peacefully without getting their partners on the same page with them, which are both successes in, in my book. Um, other bonuses I have too, but the biggest thing is that we are, we're actually gonna start the live run of the course on the 30th, next week I'm taking off, I need a break. <laughs> and um, it's, the, it's like every holiday you can imagine all, 
all, all the holidays fall on the same week this year. So whatever religion or non-religion you are, they're all next week, it <laughs> feels like. <laughs> um, so the 30th, we're going to start and I'm going to have 10 live coaching calls with me. So Mondays at 1030 Pacific time and Fridays at noon Pacific time for an hour, we're going to meet in a video conference format. So not like this where I'm talking at you, but actually in a video conference where we can interact with one another. Um, and, and I'm going to be able to coach you specifically with issues that are going on in your family. Because like I said, my goal is like for things to change for you. And then the other thing is we will have a Facebook group that's just ours. And I will be very active in that for the duration of the live course, which is through the 31st of January. And then after that, you have lifetime access to the actual digital parts of the course. So everything except the, the coaching calls and the Facebook group will continue on. You can go back and access it anytime you want. Wow. So that combined with everything that hand in hand offering hand in hand is offering is a pretty awesome deal. Um, so yeah, so I, I mean, I would love the opportunity to support you. If you feel like it's a good match for you, join us. If you don't, awesome. Um, I really do like to work with people who want to do the work because I don't have a magic pill. And anyone who has it, says they have a magic pill is not telling you the truth, but I'm just going to be honest. I don't have a magic pill, but I definitely have tools and support and a format that I've used over and over again to help thousands of parents actually move their boys beyond aggression. And I know I can help you too. So I hope that you'll join us. There's a question here, Tasha. Um, can the course be done by both parents at home? Yes, absolutely. It's at home, it's both parents. Um, everything that I do is both parents. Okay, so if one parent signs up, the other parent is included? Yes. In other words, for the 10 coaching calls, if one parent signs up, it's like a, your family is signing up. I'm here to help your family. So yeah. if there are two parents in that family, you can both join on the calls. Right. All the better. And both join the Facebook group. Wow. Great. Yep. Great. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions here. So I just want to thank you for joining us and bringing the things that you, just your thinking, your perspective on boys and on what our issues are as parents when our boys are showing aggressive behavior. Um, you, you know a lot, you've really been able to distill exactly you know, where we need help and, and exactly how to help us. So thank you so much. Um, do you want to end with a quick little anecdote? Just a little success story? Oh, let's see. Um... Well, I get a lot of questions about physical aggression, if you were, if you will. Um, and so I had a parent tell me the other day uh, a situation. They picked their boy up from school and he wanted to go get a snack, like go out to eat after school. And this mom, you know, was like, no, we're, we're going to go home. We'll eat, but we'll go home and eat. We're not going to go out right now. And he was super cheery when he got in the car. And then as soon as she said no to the going out to eat, he started, you know, cussing her out and calling her horrible names. And instead of, um, you know, punishing or getting angry and jumping back, she got really silly with him and playful with him. And they were driving and she was sort of like, you know, poking at him, even like physically, like, and I don't remember exactly what she said. She said to she said to him, but she just was stayed really loose in her body and and goofy and was like, well, just wait until we get home. You know, you talk to me like that, I'm gonna kick your booty. <laughs> you know? Oh. And and she was kind of getting, you know, he was getting kind of smart with her with her and she was getting a little smart with him but in a really light playful kind of a way uh -huh. and by the time they got home it was a game of tag it was like when he got out of the car he was like you know trying to touch her and then she was chasing after him and then it was just a back and forth and there was a lot of laughter they went inside and she was able to make him food <laughs> and the evening you know ended up just fine so just an example and, you know, I know, I noticed even you, Patty, you're like, whoa, you know, <laughs> and, and, but that's what it's like. Yeah. I mean, that is what it's like. Like, if we don't say what it's like, then we all sit around in our houses thinking like, oh my God, my kid is the only one who calls me this horrible name, or my kid is the only one who tries to hit me, or my children are the only ones who bite each other and leave purple marks on their, on their arm. And in fact, it's not true. It's just not true. And the thing about this parent is that these things used to happen all the time. And now it's really a rarity. 
and she has the full confidence to be able to move through it like the situation I just told you. And that's not, it's not like it's gonna come up again today for her, that was yesterday. Mm -hmm. But she could go months without something like that happening. Wow, 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 okay. Thank you for sharing, Tasha. It is your your you are a real blessing to all of us. To Thank you, Patty. Bring Thanks your for that. and put it out there the way you have. It's really um, important. So thank you. And me thank you. Are. Thanks for hosting me. I'm thank so appreciative of Hand in Hand and everything that you all do. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for joining us. Um, have a good rest of your day. I hope you're leaving a little more hopeful than you came. Take care. Bye bye.